welcome students let's continue with the chapter 2 self and personality so today we are going to understand uh, the topic assessment of personality uh, under which we will try to understand what are the different techniques available for assessing personality so uh, under this we will cover two topics today first is self report measures and uh, next is projective techniques so let's continue personality assessment so to study personality scientifically we must first be able to measure it so how do psychologist deal with this issue so as uh, we will soon see in several different ways so basically assessment refers to the procedures used to evaluate or differentiate people on the basis of certain characteristics so the goal of assessment is to understand and predict behavior with minimum error and maximum accuracy see in assessment we try to study what a person does or how uh, he or she behaves in a given situation so besides promoting or understanding assessment is also useful for diagnosis training placement counseling and other purposes so uh, psychologist have uh, tried to assess personality in various ways so the most commonly used techniques are given in your book are psychometric tests self report measures projective techniques and behavioral analysis so now we are already familiar with the psychometric test which we did in chapter 1 intelligence now uh, we will start with self report measures so let's continue first technique of measuring personality is self report measures so self report measure are also known as self report inventories or personality inventories are the self rating questionnaires where the individual describe his own feelings environment and reaction of others towards himself so in a nutshell uh, on the self report inventories a person reports about himself in the light of the questions or in psychology we say items put there in so hence the method is known as self report inventory such measures sometimes known as objective test of personality contains questions or statement to which individual respond in various ways for example a questionnaire might ask respondent to indicate the extent to which each of a set of statement is true or false about themselves the extent to which they agree or disagree with various sentences which of a pair of activities they prefer for example a person taking the test simply indicate the extent to which they agree or disagree with each item like one is equal to strongly disagree two is equal to disagree three is equal is equal to neutral 4 is equal to agree and 5 is equal to strongly agree so answers to the questions on these objective test are scored by means of special keys the score obtained by a specific person is then compared with those obtained by hundreds or even thousands of other people who have taken the test previously so in this way an individual's relative standing on the trait being measured can be determined so now we will discuss some uh, important or well known self report measures the minnesota multiphasic personality inventory is a type of self report inventories so this inventory is widely used as a test uh, in personality assessment so um, it is this test is very useful and helpful tool for psychiatric uh, diagnosis but the test has been found very effective in identifying various uh, varieties of psychopathology or pathology or abnormality related to the 
uh, or we can say mental abnormalities so it, it is revised its revised version is available as mmpi2 so it consists of five six seven statements or items the subject has to judge each items or statement as true or false for him or her the test is divided into 10 subscales which seeks to diagnose hypochondriasis then depression then there is a separate subscale of hysteria then psychopathetic uh, deviate then um, masculinity and femininity paranoia uh, psychasthenia then schizophrenia mania and uh, social introversion so in india malik and joshi have developed the jodhpur uh, multiphasic personality inventory along the lines of mmpi Second is Einstein personality questionnaire. Einstein in 1975 developed a series of tests designed to measure normal and abnormal dimensions of personality. So Einstein identified three major dimensions of personality: psychoticism, extroversion, and neuroticism. So the Einstein personality questionnaire (EPQ) comprises items that intend to measure these three dimensions of personality. So the EPQ consists of 90 statements to be answered in terms of either yes or no, and is specially suited for person aged. 16 and older and it's um, uh, EPQ junior EPQ is available for assessing these dimensions among children aged 7 to 15 at the end it consists of 81 statements 16 personality factor questionnaire so it is also known as cattle's personality questionnaire and uh, cattle is an, another important psychologist who widely used factor analysis strategy in developing a structured personality test so uh, actually he had developed a number of personality inventories so of these the best known is the 16 personality factor questionnaire so currently being run in its fifth edition so the 16 personality factor also uh, 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 known as 16 pf was originally published in 1949 and is meant for the assessment of personality for ages 16 and over so um, it is 16 scores separately on 16 traits of personality each of which is bipolar means reserved versus outgoing less intelligent versus more intelligent humble humble versus assertive shy versus venturesome tough-minded versus tender-minded so it is bipolar in nature and uh, this fifth edition of 16 pf is available in um, one form and contains 185 items so um, it has been found extremely useful in career guidance vocational exploration and occupational testing so the test can be used with high school level students as well as with adults so there are uh, many popular tests which use self-report technique which have been described uh, earlier so there are several others that try to assess specific dimensions of personality like optimism hope so etc so as you proceed further with your study of psychology you will come to know more about them limitations of self-report inventories the self-report uh, inventories suffer from a number of problems one is social desirability so social desirability is when people give an ideal response to a research or to a questionnaire or inventory that is the answer which is socially acceptable rather than the true response so this situation is known as social desirability think about people reporting their ideal weight because we live in a society that emphasizing being thin so this can be an example of social desirability bias 
Next limitation of self-report inventory is acquiescence. Uh, it is a tendency of the testee or the subject to agree with the items or the statements irrespective uh, of their contents. So it often appears in the form of saying yes to the items. So this tendency is give the assessment of the personality or make the assessment of the personality less reliable. Projective techniques. So uh, uh, the inventories which we discussed earlier were the uh, direct technique of assessing personality because they uh, because they rely on the information directly obtained from the uh, person, subject or testee who clearly knows that his or her personality is being assessed. In this situation, uh, people generally become uh, self-conscious and hesitate to share their private feelings, thoughts. So when they do so, they often do it in a socially desirable manner, uh, which we um, uh, try to understand earlier and which is again a limitation of uh, self-report inventories. So uh, the psychoanalytic theory, we all know that tells us that a large part of human behavior is governed by unconscious motives, desires and feelings. So direct method of personality assessment cannot uncover the unconscious part of our behavior. So they fail to provide us with a real picture of a subject personality. So these problems can be overcome by using indirect method of assessment that is projective techniques. So projective techniques basically developed to assess unconscious motives and feelings of the uh, subject. So these techniques are the uh, are based on the assumption that a less uh, structured uh, or the unstructured stimulus or situation. So the unstructured stimulus or situation means those situations uh, whose meaning or interpretation will vary from individual to individual. So uh, these techniques are based on the assumption that uh, an unstructured stimulus or situation will allow the individual to project his or her feelings, desires and needs onto that situation so and these projections are uh, uh, interpreted by experts so we have variety of projective techniques um, some of them and the different projective techniques use a different stimulus material and situations for assessing personality some of them require uh, reporting association with stimuli, stimuli for example words in plots some involves story writing around pictures some uh, projective techniques test require sentence completion some requires expressions through drawing etc so while the nature of stimuli and responses used in uh, projective uh, projective techniques vary all of them do share the following features. So the features of all the projective techniques are like the stimuli are relatively or fully unstructured and poorly defined. Unstructured mean all person will perceive the situations or stimulus uh, differently. They all will perceive or give meaning it differently and purely defined that means ambiguous the uh, stimulus are not clear so second the person being assessed is usually not told about the purpose of the assessment and the method of, the subject is also not told the method of uh, scoring and uh, interpretation and the person is informed that there is no correct or incorrect responses each response is considered to reveal a significant aspect of personality scoring and interpretations are lengthy and sometimes subjective from this now uh, you would be able to understand the difference between the self-report measures and projective techniques that uh, the first difference is 
that self report measures are objective tests and projective techniques are subjective tests and uh, the self report measures use quantitative measures for scoring and interpretation and the projective techniques use qualitative methods for uh, scoring and uh, uh, qualitative methods for interpretation and projective techniques uh, let me tell you involves uh, and it requires uh, rigorous training for interpretation The Rorschach inkblot test it's the most popular projective technique and uh, the test is developed by Hermann Rorschach a Swiss psychiatrist in 1921 to make a diagnostic investigation of personality as a whole basically the test consists of 10 ink blots five of them are in black and white two with some red pink and the remaining three in some pastel colors so the blots are symmetrically in design with a specific shape or form so each blot is printed in the center of a white cardboard of about 7 uh, is to 10 uh, inch size so the blots uh, were originally made by dropping ink on a piece of paper and then folding the paper in half hence called ink blot test so the cards are administered individually in two phases in the first phase called performance proper the subject are shown the cards and asked to tell what they say what they see in each of them in the second phase called inquiry phase a detailed report of the response is prepared by asking the subject to tell where how and on what basis was a particular response made so fine judgment is necessary to place the subject's response in a meaningful context so the use and interpretation of this test requires extensive training nowadays computer technique too have been developed for the analysis of the data next is the thematic apperception test the thematic apperception test also known as TAT is another projective test commonly used in the clinical and non-clinical settings. So the TAT was first published by Murray in 1935. So in the TAT two terms are worth mentioning namely thematic and the second is apperception. So the term thematic has been derived from the term thema which refers to a subject or topic on which a person thinks speaks or writes the second term of the test a perception refers to a clear perception involving definite recognition or identification so thus a perception is different from perception in the sense that uh, sometimes perception may be vague or indistinct it is little more structured than the ink blot test the test consists of uh, total uh, 31 pictures the test consists of 30 black and white picture cards and one blank card so each picture card depicts one or more people in a variety of situations so each picture is printed on a card uh, so the cards are presented one at a time the subject is asked to tell a story describing the situation presenting in the picture which led up to the situation what is happening at the moment what will happen in the future and what the characters are feeling and thinking so a standard procedure is available for scoring TAT responses the test has been modified for children and for the aged people so Uma Chaudhary's Indian adaptation of TAT is also available so there are some cards in this test which are used with adult males or females only others are used with boys or girls so still others are used in some combination so uh, 20 cards are appropriate for a subject although less than number of cards even five also have been successively used
Next is Rosenzweig picture frustration study, also known as PF study. So, projective test administered to assess personality characteristics in which the subject is shown scenes depicting moderately frustrating situation and asked what the frustrated person depicted would probably do or how the subject would react in such situation. So, the Rosenzweig picture frustration tests consist of 24 cartoon pictures, each portraying two persons in a frustrating situation. So, each picture contains two speech balloons, a filled one for the frustrator and the blank one for the frustrated person. So, the subject is asked to fill in the blank balloon with his or her response to the situation and the responses are scored in relation to the number of psychological defense mechanism. For example, responses are uh, scored as to whether and to what degree they indicate that the subject exhibit aggression towards the source of frustration, assumes blame or guilt as the cause of the frustration or justifies, minimizes or denies the frustration. The score is based on a total of nine factors derived from the combination of three types of aggression and three uh, direction of aggression. So the direction of aggression may be towards the environment, towards oneself or it may be turned off to evade the situation. So however, uh, this uh, test also has been adapted in Indian population with respect to the Indian population by Parikh. Next is sentence completion test. So this test use a number of incomplete sentences. Uh, the beginning of the sentence is first presented and the subject has to provide an ending to the sentence, it is uh, held that the type of endings used by the subject will reflect their attitude, motivation and conflicts. So the test also provides subject with several opportunities to reveal their underlying unconscious motivation. So um, a sample of items of a sentence completion test are given. So in figure drawing test, the examinee is given a sheet of paper and pencil to draw the figures of a person and in such drawings, he is assured by the examiner that this is no longer a test of his or her drawing ability and thus is encouraged in his efforts. So in this uh, drawing a person test, the examinee is instructed to draw a person. If the first drawing is male, he is asked to draw a female and vice versa. So, so the examiner systematically notes down uh, the procedure or the sequence in which different parts of the body are shown. He also notes down the other comments and procedural details. The drawings are some, sometimes followed by inquiry to elicit specific information regarding the details of the drawings. Like some examples of the interpretation are omission of facial features like uh, omission of like eyes and nose or some facial features such as that person tries to evade a highly conflict ridden interpersonal relationship. Graphic emphasis on the neck suggests lack of control over impulses and disproportionately large head suggests organic brain disease and preoccupations with headaches. So that's all about uh, projective techniques. So the analysis of the personality with the help of the projective techniques appears fairly interesting, but it requires rigorous training and specialized training and sophisticated skills for its interpretation. And it helps us to understand unconscious motives, deep-rooted conflicts and emotional complexes of an individual.
so there are uh, problems associated with the reliability of the scoring and validity of the interpretations but the practitioners have found these techniques quite useful